And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Well, we're joined by the aforementioned Ed Welch and Monk Grow, who are going to be honored at the Living Legends Dinner. And they are almost living legends. They won't be le living legends until they get inducted, though. But anyway, congratulations to both of you. That's quite the Thank honor. You, Joe. Yeah. Um, you know, let's start with you, Monk. Um, you are a, a, a musician, but you recognize the value of history with what you're doing up at Hamilton College. Talk about that a little bit. Next spring will mark 25 years since we started this project at Hamilton College. It's called the Phileas Jazz Archive, and it was named after Milt Phileas, class of 44, whose idea it was. And we undertook a project to do videotaped interviews with jazz and swing musicians. We started out with elderly musicians because the folks from the 30s and 40s were passing away. And we've done close to 400 sessions mm. now. We have a YouTube channel called Phileas Jazz. And it's been a remarkable project. And Ed and I were talking about how nice it is to be like recognized while you're still alive. <laughs> and it made me think of this project yeah. that we're, we're focusing on these musicians while they're still with us. And you're doing the interviews yourself, are yes. you not? Mm -hmm. And what about the uh, people that are out of town? How are you doing that? We have traveled a great deal in the last 25 years. Uh, we go to jazz events around the country. We sometimes will go to a certain city and stay for three or four days and meet with people there. So it's been a lot of road work, uh, especially in the first 10 years. Nowadays, I sometimes get people as they pass through town or I'll make a specific trip to a city for like one interview. Mm. Are those uh, archives open to the public? How does the public get They out? are. Uh, they can call me up at Hamilton College, ask for me, and I'll, they'll get connected. I have a nice space up there. We have a certain amount of jazz memorabilia, a lot of photographs, mm. um, and I also can recommend them if they are looking for something specific about a musician. All the transcriptions are online, and you can search them. The interesting thing about the two things that I think um, People that died before we started this project, we can also find out about them because I've interviewed a lot of people who've played with Billy Holiday and mm. all those people who passed away years ago. Also, there's stories about um, the country, not just music, but folks growing up in the, during the Depression, what it was like to serve in World War II, uh, racial issues across the country. So it's uh, sociology also. Yeah. Uh, Ed Welch, uh, in addition to congratulating you on your Living Legends Award, congratulations on your new job, CABVI. Yes, thank you. I'm the uh, incoming president there. Yeah. And I'll be taking over November 1st. Yeah. Rudy, De you were replacing Rudy, not that anybody could replace him, but you're succeeding Rudy D'Amico, yes? Yes, uh, and succeeding is the right word because uh, Rudy's irreplaceable as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And uh, on a little bit sadder note, sadder for me anyway, is, uh, and a lot of other people, uh, is you're giving up your uh, talk show on WIBX. Yes, uh, after 32 years, I'll be retiring from broadcasting and uh, retiring from AAA as well. So, uh, you know, I, I, if you told me a year ago that I'd be doing this, I would have thought you were nuts. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, it's funny how things go in life. And of course, uh, December 31st, I'll be stepping down as an United County legislator after 18 years there yeah. as well. A lot of changes in Ed Welch's life, yes. You know, I like doing different things. Uh, you know, growing up, uh, George Plimpton was my favorite author. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you know, he did everything. Yeah. And I always thought that inspired me to want to try different things in life. Although I, I never saw myself uh, playing professional football or some of the other things that George did. <laughs> but I think what I learned from him was you can do anything you want in life and life's a big buffet and you should do different things. Yeah. And I've been fortunate that I've had an opportunity to do things and everything I do, I love. So I, I never, so to speak, get bored or tired with the things that I do. I just want to try different things and do different things. And uh, my, my current new assignment, I think, is going to keep me quite busy. I think so. That's a pretty big operation. In fact, you ought to come back um, some, not, sometime down the road. We'll talk a little I, bit about I would about love to CABB. tell you what's going on at the agency. Yeah. We've got a lot of great stuff going on there, yeah. a lot of new things. And uh, I think a lot of people uh, would be surprised to learn what we do there as a yeah. social enterprise. Well, we'll have you back. We'll talk about the, some of those things. I said Monk realized the uh, value of history, and you do too. Your district, your county legislative district, includes the United County History Center, and uh, you've been very supportive over there. You know, one of the things, and I if we switch, put my hat on you know, if, as a legislator, and we'll say politician, although that's not a very good word nowadays, I understand. 
but you know that's really two different jobs. You 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 run for office and you hold yeah. office, yeah. and they're two distinctly different jobs. Uh, I can tell you the holding office is a much better job than running for office. That's a very difficult and testy job. We'll put it that way. Mm. But truth of the matter is that when I first ran, I wanted to talk about our cultural assets in our city and our community, and really most of them are rooted in history. So if you want to talk about Fort Stanwix or you want to talk about the Risky Battlefield or you want to talk about the Erie Canal, th th these are things that were rooted in our history. And of course, when we think of when the base left back in 95 and the, the downturn that this community took, one of the things we had to build it back up was our cultural assets and our historical assets. So I believe that much of what we've accomplished in the last 18 years uh, has been played on taking to our strengths and, and making those uh, advantages for us. And I think we've done that in many, many ways. Mm -hmm. So uh, without history and our ability to rely on it here in the Mohawk Valley, uh, we didn't have a whole lot to offer when industry left here. And I think it was our rich history and our culture here that we were able to build it back upon and rebuild ourselves. Yeah. We've had a lot of history of musicians in this area, including we yourself. We have indeed. Yeah. In fact, uh, I was very fortunate when I arrived here in 1974 that... From where, Monk? From Rochester. Mm -hmm. I went to school at SUNY Fredonia, and then I ended up here. and mm -hmm. taught at VVS for short five years. But there was a very healthy music scene, and I got to uh, get my second education from mm -hmm. playing with the Montalbanos and oh, Dolores yeah. Mancuso and, and all those folks, and Sal Alberico, who I noticed received a Living Levin yeah. Award years yeah. ago. So that was really my second education. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, I've played about every kind of gig imaginable. Yeah, yeah. And I uh, know I see you all over the place. We come back, we'll talk some more about your gigs, and we'll talk some more with Ed Welch. Short break, right back. <laughs> 